Hello and thanks for coming to my channel. My name is Ken and for today's session I'm going to show you how to put together a small footprint Kubernetes cluster uh, that you'll be able to run and develop against on your development box. So you might find this setup handy for cases where you don't want to incur the cost of working with a Kubernetes cluster in the cloud or maybe you, you want to run a fast setup and teardown of a cluster for whichever reasons you may have or Maybe you want full unrestricted access to your own Kubernetes cluster, and maybe you want to do some rapid prototyping. Whatever that case may be, um, probably more than likely because you felt like it, and that's pretty good reason too. Uh, so before you get started, make sure you have the following prerequisites installed on the box that you're going to be installing the cluster onto. First things first, pretty much any application mentioned here that runs as a CLI, uh, you want to make sure that they're also available in your path environment variable. So to start, you're going to want to have uh, Docker installed uh, and make sure that it's, it's the command line tool component is available to as well. Uh, Docker is going to be important here because at the end of all this, uh, your local Kubernetes cluster will actually consist of various Kubernetes master and worker node containers that will be running in Docker. Uh, next, you're going to want to make sure you have the K3D application installed. Uh, this is going to allow you to create and destroy clusters. And then, uh, and then finally, you're going to need the uh, the cube control command line tool for interacting with your cluster. Your, your cluster. Now, optionally, um, for for convenience, tools for processing, querying, and you know, pretty printing JSON on the terminal, uh, you might want to grab the uh, command line tool JQ. And then, additionally, as well as optionally, if you want to visually navigate and work with your cluster, I would highly recommend a uh, Kubernetes IDE called Lens. So without further ado, I'm going to walk you through how to do all this. So let's get out of this real quick here. And um, just to let you know, um, the, uh, you just go to K3D and you can grab the K3D application from this site here. And then also the uh, the the tool uh, load balancer that we're leveraging is called Metal uh, Metal LB. And uh, we're gonna, I'm going to show you how all this works together uh, in, in a few seconds. So let's go and get to our command line terminal. And now that we're here, um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to go ahead and create our cluster. So let's go ahead with our K3D utility application here and create our cluster. So K3D cluster, create local. The name, uh, the name of the cluster is local Kates. So uh, cluster create local Kates, and then um, we want to specify the number of master nodes as well as the number of worker nodes, and then. Because K3S comes bundled with uh, the ingress controller traffic, um, we're not going to be using that because we're going to be using metal metal LB instead. So we don't want to include that include that in our in our cluster. So we'll go ahead and specify these command line command line arguments to take out that deployment or to not or basically to tell it to not deploy the traffic ingress controller into our into our cluster. So let's do it like this, and then we tell it to wait. And then let's look, look at that command line real quick to see if we got everything right here. And looks like everything is good. So great. Now our cluster is being created. So what's going on behind the scenes here is, uh, is K3D is creating our cluster, uh, which is combined of one master node and three worker nodes, right? Uh, these these are actually uh, these are actually Coop, uh, these are actually Docker containers that. Uh, that are being created and uh, and spun up. So and then there's that, and then there's also actually a server load balancer uh, container that's being spun up too as well. Once all of these containers are spun up and running in unison, that there composes uh, composes our cluster, our local cluster to be run. So we're gonna wait for that to finish, and once that finishes, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna validate that cluster uh, to see that it's uh, see that it's up and running and doing its thing. So this is just about to finish, and as it finishes. Great. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to start validating our cluster. So let's go ahead and do that by uh, setting the kube config environment variable. And we're going to do that so that we can access the Kubernetes context um, with our kube control command. So let's go ahead and do that with export kube config equals. And then K3D actually comes with uh, some pretty convenient, uh, convenient commands. So for example, I want to get a command for getting my kube config uh, path location. So let's go ahead and do that. And and then basically I specify k3d kube config write local in the name of my cluster. And this will actually uh, get the path of where my kube config file is at. And I set that to my uh, my environment variable there. And then um, if that worked 
correctly, then I should be able to get the nodes of my cluster with my cube control command. Great, so I see three worker nodes and one master node and they're all in ready status, so that's great. So if we wanted to go ahead and check out, for example, underneath the hood, now I did say that this is all running in Docker, so let's go ahead and do Docker PS. And respectively, um, uh, I am seeing, again, three worker nodes and one master, uh, one, three worker nodes and one master node, and then a, a server load balancer container, which all corresponds to the nodes that are currently currently running and, and, and currently running and makes and what makes up my cluster. So uh, that being the case, uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and configure our load balancer range. So the next thing we're going to want to do this so that we can determine an accessible address block that we'll be able to use for allocating addresses to our Kubernetes load balancer. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to want to go ahead and um, do that by taking a look at the Docker network list, right? So if you actually look at this list, you'll see that K3D created a network in here. Um, we're going to want to inspect that network because that network is going to basically give us the, the valid address block that we're going to be working from. So let's go ahead and do a Docker network uh, inspect uh, K3D local Kates and gives us this chunk of JSON here. So let's make it look a little bit prettier. I'm gonna go ahead and use that JQ command. Uh, this is optional. But, uh, so that gives us that. So here is the CIDR block that we're interested in here. Okay, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna create a environment variable which, which extracts this, uh, this CIDR block, uh, this CIDR block value here. And I'm gonna go, and it's, it's kinda long, but uh, it's, it's convenient for my uses. So let's go ahead and create a uh, command which goes ahead and gets that cider block and assigns it to this uh, this environment variable called cider block. So let's do that. Great. Now let's check the value of that cider block value. And okay, great. So now that we have that assigned to that uh, to that variable there, uh, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and look at the full range. So we're going to go ahead and calculate the full range of this CIDR block and, and, and look at what the, what the range of value, available range of values of IPs that we can leverage. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to leverage something called SIP calc. And we're going to pass in our CIDR block here. And great. So then all this stuff here, and then what I really care about is this usable range down here at the bottom. So this usable range tells me the first IP address that's that's in that range, as well as the last IP address that's signed to that range. So I'm only interested in leveraging a portion of this IP this IP range here. So probably maybe the last 254, uh, the last 254 IPs uh, in this range here. So I'm going to go ahead and create another environment variable, and we're going to call that. Uh, let's go ahead and call that um, uh, ingress range, right? So I'll go ingress underscore range, and for the first one, I'm going to do a 172.31.255.0, okay, as the as the bottom a bottom end of the range, and then for the top end of the range, it's going to be this this value here. So 172.31.255.254. So that's going to give us about 255 values. Yeah. So let's go ahead and do that. So great. Now I've got a environment variable. Uh, called ingress range and that's going to come in handy for when we actually create and deploy our load balancer so the first thing that we're going to do so for our clusters load balancer we're going to go ahead and leverage something called metal lb which is a load balancer implementation for bare metal kubernetes cluster so the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and copy this command which is going to basically create the namespace for our load balancer and you can grab these commands from the metal metal lb um the website when you actually go through the installation instructions so uh, this, like I said, this simply creates the the namespace. The, the next the next line is actually uh, what actually deploys Metal LB. It's going to deploy it. It's going to set. It's going to create service accounts as well as RBAC uh, roles and service bindings and or sorry roles and roles role bindings and uh, as well as a deployment too as well. So you'll see all that happen very soon, and that's what's happening right now. So at this point, we now have a local Kubernetes with a fully functional load balancer. Um, so not to validate that functionality, we can do that by creating a test deployment and then exposing that deployment as a load balance service. So let's try doing that, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and create 
let's go ahead and create an nginx deployment. So cube control create deployment nginx and let's specify an image of nginx and this will create our nginx deployment called nginx. And so the deployment's been created. Next, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to expose the service. So let's go ahead and expose the or sorry, expose the deployment as a load balanced service. So let's do that with a cube control expose the deployment named nginx on port 80 80 <laughs> uh uh, elf type load balancer. And let's see if that looks right. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. So at this point here, let's go ahead and look at, uh, let's go ahead and look at what, what the layout of our cluster looks like. So um, we could do that with a cube control get, uh, get all, oh, no, cube control get all, right? And that'll give us everything, which is great. Um, or, we can go ahead and open up, uh, for example, let's go ahead and do that through Lens. So Lens, uh, so like I said, this is a good way, this is a good tool to, you know, neat little tool that you can leverage to get a visual representation of your cluster um, through an IDE of some sorts. So you can do that with uh, this right here. And I've got some of the configuration cell already, uh, which basically you, you point it to where your cube config is located at, and then it picks, and then you pick the context that you want to you want to add. So in this case, I'm adding that cluster here. So let's go and look at that cluster. All right, great. So I'm interested in the, let's see what workloads. I'm interested in my services. So let's go to network services, and the service that I'm interested in is this this engine service right here. So this engine service, what I see here, um, it basically when it created this service here and I exposed it. It created all these IPs here, right? These external IPs that I can access the uh, the server at. So if I wanted to actually go ahead and you know see if my my load balancer is working, let's go ahead and take one of these IPs here. So 172.31.0.2, and uh, if we're lucky, that should be accessible. Hey, and there you go. We have an exposed we have an ex uh, an exposed uh, accessible deployment through our our load balanced service. And through that, uh, you should be able to go ahead and uh, work with your Kubernetes cluster as you uh, as you wish, and you know, and, and, and leverage this load balancer service to expose uh, your services. Um, thank you for watching my uh, this session here, and uh, I hope uh, you this has helped you. Thank you.